Sor Juana Ine de la Cruz was a Mexican writer, scholar, and nun. Her original name was Juana Gomez de la Bache, and the Sor is the proper title for a nun, meaning sister, while de la Cruz means off the cross. She was born out of wedlock in either 1648 or 1651, near Mexico City. At this time, Mexico was still a Spanish colony. Her grandfather on her mother's side was able to help provide for Juana, her mother, and two sisters. Juana's grandfather had a library, and as a child she learned to read so that she could read the books in the library. Her quest for knowledge was so great that she even wanted to go to Mexico City and pretend to be a boy so that she could go to university. During the 1600s, education for women was still limited, but Juana was able to study under the instruction of a priest when she went to live with her aunt in Mexico City at the age of eight. At the age of 16, the viceroy, Antonio Sebastian de Toledo, Marquis de Mancera, and his wife made her their lady-in-waiting. Juana's brilliance was apparent, for she spoke Latin and one of the Aztec languages, Nahuatl. She became famous at 17 when she answered the questions of 40 men who were scholars in subjects such as philosophy, theology, mathematics, history, and poetry. Having no interest in marriage, Sor Juana became a nun so that she could pursue her studies. She is known to have had one of the largest libraries in North America at that time. As a nun, she continued her contact with scholars as well as the viceroy and Versarine. They helped spread Sor Juana's fame by having her writings published in Spain and enabling her to become the unofficial court poet. She wrote poems and books to entertain, but also more serious works pertaining to the right of women to education and women's role in society. She openly criticized the duplicacy of men in some of her poems, pressing new ideas like other Enlightenment thinkers of the time. One of Sor Juana's best-known works came out of a criticism she received from the Bishop of Puebla in 1690. Two years earlier, the viceroy and his wife had gone back to Spain, which had lessened the measure of esteem and protection Sor Juana had. The critique commented on how Sor Juana's entertaining writings lacked the amount of religious content a nun's poetry and books should have, and how her religious writings were about deep theological subjects which before only men had written about. Sor Juana's reply was Respuesta a Sor Filotea, which is sometimes considered the first feminist manifesto. She used the Bible to support her arguments and defended women's education, among other rights that women deserve in order that they may be equal to men. This response, although well written and thought out, angered many of those in the church. Eventually, Sor Juana was forced to sell her books and science and musical instruments due to the pressures on her from various critics. She renewed her vows and stopped writing non-religious works by 1694. In 1695, there was a plague, and as Sor Juana cared for the sick in the convent, she herself contracted the illness and died when she was about 44 years old. Although Sor Juana was silenced during the last years of her life, she has become an icon in Mexican history, and her image can be seen on the 200 pesos. She has also played a role in the feminist movement, and her writings continue to be read and inspire people today. Sor Juana also contributed to the Enlightenment through her writing. Most of her works were written on commission for religious or court celebrations, but she still had the freedom to write ideas that were, at the time, considered radical. New ideas are a characteristic of the Enlightenment, and Sor Juana's works were read both in Mexico and Spain. Sor Juana had knowledge of a wide range of subjects, and she has been called the last great writer of the Hispanic Baroque. Her discussion of women's rights, as seen in Las Puestas a Sor Filote, demonstrates her extreme intellectual abilities, reasoning, philosophical, and argumentative skills. Despite Sor Juana's criticisms, she is a prominent figure of the Enlightenment due to her intellectual writings, and she was one of the greatest writers of North America during her lifetime.